G'day guys, my name's Nick and this is my channel Low Range Nick where I do videos about four-wheel driving, accessory fitting and maintenance for your four-wheel drive vehicle. So in today's video I'm going to be doing a service on the MUX. So I've got all the filters here that I'm going to be changing. So I've got an air, pollen, oil and fuel and we'll change all the oils, uh, front and rear diff oils as well. So I'll be talking you through uh, how I do a service on my four-wheel drive and the sort of things you need to look for when you're checking over. So the first thing I'm going to do now guys is just pop this engine cover off, so it's just on some rubber grommets. So just pop it up at the front and the back and it should come off. Get rid of that. And I'm just going to take this oil filler cap off, put this aside, 100, 150 mil or so of engine oil flush here. So I'll just put that into the engine, into the oil filler. I'll put my engine oil flush in. Now I can run the engine for about 10 minutes or so, just to let that engine oil flush mix with the engine oil and break down the deposits. Then I'll be able to go up in the air and drain it out. So while that engine oil flush is working its magic and I've got the engine running, I'm just going to have a good check over the engine bay and uh, you know, really have a nice check over everything and make sure there's no leaks, uh, nothing's loose and everything's out to be. Let's have a bit of a look. dipstick so I know that I'm going to drain the oil and when I've got fresh oil in it I'll pop that back in so I know that I've got uh, oil in the engine before I start it so it's just a nice little warning thing I like to do to pop that dipstick out so you pretty much you know you can't start the engine without the oil in there because you've got this big yellow dipstick hanging out showing you and reminding you to put oil in it first off now we can go up we can do a bit of a check over and drain that oil So when I get to about chest height, I usually go around the vehicle and check all the wheels, tyres, uh, you know, have a look at the brakes, have a look at the suspension and the inner guard, make sure there's nothing hanging down. So I'll just do a little bit of a wheel bearing check, so just a little bit of a wobble left to right and up and down. We usually feel play in the hub, the wheel bearings uh, are getting loose. So now we'll uh, go around, check the tyre pressures, uh, I usually send them to about 40 psi, uh, all round on my car when I'm on the highway, seems to be pretty good. Have a look at the brakes, check the depth, also check inside the inner guard line and make sure nothing's hanging down. While I'm here I can have a little bit of a squeeze at my catch can drain. Now, I drained that not too long ago, so I drained that or oh, maybe two weeks ago. So I'd racked up about five, six thousand Ks and I drained out about 150, 200 mils. So it's doing its job, uh, doing it really well. So I will do a video um, on the next drain, uh, once I've drained it twice, so I can give you a bit of an update on how it's been going. Um, so stay tuned for that one. So everything's looking pretty good in here, underneath. So now I pretty much just do the same check over on every single wheel, make sure it's all good, and also check my tyre pressures. Now I've checked over all my wheels, all my tyre pressures, uh, all the inner guard and you know, the brakes and everything. Now it's time to go right up in the air and we can start draining that oil. So, Alright guys, so now we're up in the air. Now I can take the bash plates off. So I'm going to take this front one off, the middle one and the back plastic one. Just so I can get really good access to you know the drain points, the oil filter and have a good check over everything as well while we're under here. It's just under here, so it's a 17 mil. Pop that off. So it's one of those drain pipes that just starts leaking as soon as you crack it off. So it needs a bit of a rag. There you go. 
So I'll let that drain for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes while we do the rest of the check over. So I've just got this little oil filter removal tool so I can take the oil filter off. So I'm just going to loosen that filter off and start draining it. So to use this tool, it pretty much just clamps around the filter and then you're able to turn it so it grabs on. Just put that up there. And then spin that off anti-clockwise. So now I've loosened that off. I'm just going to move this drainer over a bit. Now I can uh, loosen it off a bit more by hand because there's a little bowl here that the filter drains into and then a little drain tube so it comes down nicely um, into the oil drainer. We can loosen that filter all the way off and uh, bring it down. There we go, so there's the old oil filter. We'll get rid of that one. We'll let that drain for a couple of minutes. Alrighty guys, so now that the engine oil is draining, now it's time to do the check over on the rest of the car. So I'm pretty much going to go around and I'll talk to you as I'm checking over things and let you know exactly what I'm doing. So we'll start at the, the rear tyres. So I like to check over the tyres for any punctures. So spin them around, check for any punctures. Check for any weird wear. So you know sometimes you get feathering, sometimes you get corrugation if the tyre pressures aren't correct and your wheel alignment's out. So just have a good look over each of the tyres. It's pretty important to check these. Now I have just rotated these tyres probably 3,000 k's ago I think maybe. So the tyre wear is looking alright. Um, and there's no punctures in those rear ones. So I've just got the front, do the same thing, just a quick check over for any punctures. Checking for any adverse wear patterns. Looks all good. <coughs> Now these front ones um, do tend to wear a little bit heavier on those outer edges um, from cornering. Um, so that's why about every you know five, ten thousand Ks I do a rotate. So the rear tires flatten out because it's live axle on the rear and uh, they're not turning. So the rear tires flatten out. You can put the rear tires on the front. That flattens out those old front tires, you know, with the little bit of wear on the outer edges. And then you can you know keep doing that and that's how you get the best life out of your tires from consistently rotating them and uh you know checking them as well making sure the pressures are right and uh they you know your wheel wheel alignment's correct as well so a little bit of a check on the brakes so i've just got a little inspection mirror here i'll just pop that in there and you can see you know, it's about 10 millimeters on those rear ones yep and then just make sure there's no obstructions in the brakes, like you know, dirt, mud, grass, anything that could, you know, cause any damage or, you know, the heat could light on fire and stuff. So if you've got grass built up around here, um, just give it all a good check over. Check those front ones. So the thickness on the front ones is still about 10, 11 mil, so that's pretty, pretty damn good for about. Um, what am I? 33,000 k's now, so, and the front brakes are about 11 mil, the rear brakes are about 10, so that's a pretty good wear, really. So now I'll check tyres and brakes, which I call safety items. Um, we just do a full check over of the suspension, all the undercarriage, check for any leaks, um, pretty much do a thorough inspection underneath the vehicle as well of everything else. So I usually start at the rear, left hand rear, work my way across. So we're checking sway bar links, sway bar bushes, you know, shock absorbers. We're checking the axle for leaks, checking for axle seal leaks, all the rubber bushes. So have a quick squeeze at those, make sure they're not completely cracked out. Um, checking, you know, the springs, the shock tops, all the exhaust mounting. Make sure the rubber grommets that hold the exhaust in are still actually there and working. Same with the other side, so checking brake hoses as well and all those bushes. The bushes looking good, bump stops are still there, so that's good. There's no leaks from the rear diff. So it's all looking pretty good back here. The fuel filler looks nice and dry. There's no leaks up there. Exhaust mounts 
are all still intact. So at the rear we're looking pretty good, so now we can start moving forward and uh, keep checking over. One of the most important things you check on a full drive is uh, your tail shaft universal joints. So to check those, you can give them a wobble up and down and a wobble the other way. So if these have play in them, you'll actually feel this section will be clunky around separate to this. So it will have play this way or you know play the other way as well. So today we're actually going to grease all these universal joints up. So to put new grease in uh, all of these bearings in here in the unis. So now we can start moving forward a little bit around the transfer case. So again, we're just going to check these uh, uni joints in here. So hold one section, give the other a wobble, Let's see if it's got any play. So it looks good. Just needs a re-grease. Also checking over the transfer case, all of the mounting, the rubber mounts for any wear, all the lines. So it's basically a nice thorough check over of the whole vehicle looking for anything out of the ordinary and anything that can cause us issues down the track. Now we're moving forward a little bit, so I'm just going to check the uh, front tail shaft. Let's give that a little bit of a wobble. Check those uni joints. They feel pretty good, nice and tight, there's no play. I'll just have a bit of a look over the transmission for any leaks, any of those lines for leaks or anything. Back of the engine and around where the rear main sits. So checking for any leaks there so it looks nice and dry. So everything back here is looking pretty good. So now we can move forward again, uh, right to the front of the vehicle. All right, so now we're at the front of the vehicle. So now it's time to just do a check over of everything in this area. So we're basically just checking for leaks around the sump, checking those engine mounts, the rubber engine mounts, making sure they're not cracked or perished. Checking that diff for any leaks, checking the boots, so that's another thing, checking those CV boots, making sure there's no splits or leaks from them. They look pretty good so far, there's no leaks or anything, been holding up pretty well. Let's have a bit of a look underneath here at the uh, steering rack mounts, make sure they're not perished or worn. Steering boots, you've got uh, sway bar links, just make sure that all your boots uh, look okay and they're not leaking. Those sway bar bushes look good. So everything around the front is looking pretty good. Just check those brake hoses and your bump stops. Brake hoses look good, bump stops are alright. And again, just having a good look around that engine. Making sure there's no leaks, no leaks that we need to worry about. So it all looks pretty dry. It all looks pretty good. Have a good check of that drive belt. So you've got the main drive belt for your alternator drive, and then you've got your air conditioning drive as well. So check both of those. Make sure there's no cracks in them. Checking over the radiator. For any leaks and also you can see up to the bottom of the condenser and the uh, intercooler under here as well. So there's no leaks or anything and there's nothing extra I need to worry about so I can continue on now with the service. I'm just going to grease the uni joints so I've got my little grease gun here and I'm just going to go onto the tail shaft uni joint and put a few pumps in until it uh, comes out of the actual uh, little cups. Grease this front uni joint as well so just onto the grease nipple there couple of pumps and you'll see it come out of the actual uni joint uh, and that's when you know that it's uh, greased enough. Now just grease this front tail shaft so this same deal only needs a couple of pumps if you service it regularly. This front one so you can actually hear it coming out of that uni joint and that's when you know it's full enough. And also there's one just for this slip joint you just put about four or five pumps into that slip joint just to help that keep lubricated. So now we've looked after our tail shafts. Should be good for another 10, 15 thousand Ks until our next service. So before I spin my new oil filter on, I'm just gonna use a little bit of a clean rag here just to clean up that surface that the oil filter seals on. So I just wanna make sure that there's no debris 
um, blocking that surface uh, from sealing correctly. So I've got my new Ryko filter, so Z929. So I'll just pop this plastic cover off. So this Ryko filter's already got a film of oil on the seal, so that's perfect. If it was dry, I'd recommend just putting just a little film of uh, clean oil on there, just to make sure that O-ring's nice and lubricated. So now we're ready to put this new filter on. Just pop that up there, and uh, it's as easy as spinning it on. Just going to get that thread to line up, and then spin that new filter on. Nice and easy. Now how tight do you do these? Well, I would say as tight as you can get it with your bare hands. I wouldn't recommend using tools. So I usually get it about as tight as I can get it with my hands. And then grab a little bit of brake cleaner because this takes all that oily residue off it. A little bit of brake cleaner on my hand just to get all that residue off. And then I give it a final tighten. As tight as I can get it with my, with my hands. There you go, so that's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere, it's not going to leak. And it's not over tightened, which is the most important thing. Give this filter a bit of a clean down, a bit of brake cleaner. Get rid of that uh, oil around it. So again, I'll just give it a little bit of a clean. Just make sure there's no crap where that sump plug's going to seal. Then I can put my sump plug on with a new copper washer and I can tighten that up. So again I'll just use a little bit of brake cleaner, just get rid of all that oily residue. Keep everything nice and clean. So now just with this oil catchment bowl, I do like to remove these and actually clean them out properly because they do catch a lot of crap in there. So I'm just going to use one of these little trim tools just to pop the plastic clip out. Then I'll be able to remove that whole bowl and uh, clean it properly. There you go. Well, there you go, guys. That's the plastic bowl that was up there. So I did clean out with a bit of brake cleaner, but you can see that there's still oil in there. So, so it's just this little plastic clip here. It's just a little pop clip. So you really just need to pop that up, and then the whole bowl will come out, and you can clean it properly. A little bit of brake cleaner. And get rid of all that oily residue. Make sure we don't have uh, oil dripping on the ground after we do our service. While I've got that bowl out, I'll just give it a little bit more of a clean down up here because there's a little bit of oil underneath where that bowl was still. So when I'm servicing, I do like to be very nice and clean and neat and uh, make sure that you know there's no oil at all underneath the car after I'm done. Cool, so that's nice and clean now, so I can pop my bowl back in. So it just sits up in there like that, and uh, you just have to find the little hole that it sits in. Just over here, pop that in, push the clip down, and then we're good. Now it's time to drain the front diff oil, so I'll just loosen off these bungs. So the fill bung and the drain bung. I'll take the fill bung out first, so that's the top one. A little bit of diff oil is draining out. Now I'll just slowly release this drain bung and uh, we can drain all of that front diff oil out. So while that front diff oil is draining, I'm just going to adjust the handbrake up. So I'm going to pop that bung out and in here is a little adjuster wheel. So I'm just going to flick that adjuster wheel um, up until this wheel locks up. So until the handbrake locks the wheel up. There you go. And I'm going to back it off about six clicks. So one, two. six and now that handbrake should be set correctly so you need to tighten those shoes right out so it grabs on the drum and then back it off six clicks so it pulls it in so it's not going to scrub on that 
uh, drum and cause it to overheat uh, when you're going down the road, but now you have a nice uh, tight handbrake uh, when you need it. So now it's time to adjust the other side as well. So when you're adjusting the handbrake, you've got to do both sides evenly. So again, I'm going to get my handbrake tool in there. I'm going to adjust it up. There we go, so it's locked up now. And same deal with the other side. Um, back it off six clicks. Alrighty, so back to the diff. So I'll let that drain for a couple of minutes. I've just got my uh, drain plug here with a new washer on it. Just put that in. And uh, just nip that up. So for the front diff and the rear diff, I'm going to be using 75 Nicey Fully Synthetic. So I'll put that in there, and then we just keep filling this until it uh, pours out of that filler. Alrighty, we're at the limit now. So I'll pop that out. Just let it drain off for a second. So it gets to the right level. Then we can put this uh, film bung back in with a new washer on it. We can nip that up as well. So they're nice and tight. Bit of a clean down. Bit of brake cleaner. Get rid of all that oily residue from the diff. And then we can move on to the rear diff and uh, pretty much do the exact same process and uh, get rid of that old diff oil. Alrighty guys, so we're on to the rear diff now. So we're going to change the rear diff oil. So same process as the front. We'll uh, crack off the buns. It's a bit dirty in there. So if you have dirt in here, you do have to be careful because you can actually strip that bung quite easily. So we just need to get that dirt out of that little bung area so you can get your socket on there properly. There we go, so you can get on there now. Perfect, much better. Loosen that one as well. So same as the front one, take the fill bung out first. Okay, now we'll drop that drain bung off. Drain all of that uh, old diff oil out. So we'll just let that drain for a couple of minutes, get rid of all that old diff oil. And uh, while I'm waiting for that, I'll just clean up my bungs, get some new washers, and uh, get that all ready. So just on the drain bung, just make sure that there's no dirt um, where it seals. So I'll just give that a good clean, a bit of a wipe. To get rid of all that dirt there, so that's nice and clean now. Alrighty guys, so that's been drained for a couple of minutes. Put our new drain plug back in with the uh, new washer. Nip that up. Now it's time to fill the diff with our 7590 fully synthetic. Just put that in the uh, filler hole. And same as the front diff, you pretty much just fill it up until it starts coming out of the filler. So it's draining out the filler now. So now it's at the correct level. Just let it drain for a sec. And then we can pop our fill bung back in with our new washer. And just tighten that up. Perfect. A bit of a clean down now. Now we know all our diffs have nice fresh oil in them. Be good for another 20 30,000 Ks. Alrighty, guys, so I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to working on cars. 
Um, so what I usually do when I think I'm finished underneath is I'll grab my torch, start at the back, and I'll just have a quick check over again, make sure I haven't missed anything, and just double check that I've tightened all the bungs, I've looped the tail shaft, looped the front tail shaft, tightened the front diff bungs, tightened the sump plug, oil filters on there nice and tight, and that's all clean, and it's uh, all looking pretty good. So I'd just like to do a quick check over again. You know, double checking your work um, can really save you a lot of heartache in the future because if you forget things, it can be major. So double check your work and you know you won't have any issues. So now we're done under here, I'm just going to slap those under trays back on, we can bring the car back down, we can fill it with oil and change the other filters. Alrighty guys, so we're back in the engine bay now, so it's time to fill the engine up with oil. So I'm using a Valvoline product, uh, 5 watt 30, uh, it's called Sinpower, so it's a low ash uh, DPF compatible oil, and it's also fully synthetic. So, fill the engine up now. So they take about 7.5 litres um, of oil. So we've got a big 200 litre drum of the sin power over there, so I'm just using these um, oil containers just to bring it over to the car. Cool, so that's 7.5 litres. Get rid of that, we can put our filler cap back on. Now that we've got oil in the car, we can pop the dipstick down. So that's our little reminder, just to say that, you know, when it's up, we've got no oil in there. When it's down, we're good to start the car. So now I can start the engine and I'll recheck that oil level. So when I've just done a service on the car and just changed the oil, I like to come out on the first startup and just have a good look over the oil filter and the sump plug and just make sure there's no leaks. let the car run and the oil filter's filled up. Now we can check the oil level. So, pull the dipstick out, just clean the dipstick so there's no oil on it. Back in the tube, straight down to the bottom, and then pop it back out, and we'll have a look at the level. Looks ever so slightly down, so I'll just let it sit for another two minutes or so. So all that oil can drain back into the sump and then I'll recheck it. Alrighty guys, so I've let the engine sit for a couple of minutes now. I'll just recheck that oil level. See how it's looking. There you go, that's spot on there. So usually you should let the engine sit for about, you know, maybe five minutes before you check your engine oil level. Just to allow all that oil um, up in the top of the engine to drain down to the sump and then you'll be able to check the level correctly. Alright guys, so it's time to change the air filter. So these are really easy to change. You've got two little clips there. Pull the uh, top of the filter forward. And just lift the filter out like so. There you go. So that's the old air filter. So this has got about 10,000 Ks on it. So I do a lot of dirt roads and highway travel. Um, so you can see all the bugs in there and you can see it's quite dirty so we'll change it with a new one and uh, we'll be breathing clean air into that engine again <laughs> so there you go guys there's the nice new clean one and there's my old one you can see the difference so engine's going to love me for changing that so again you just lift the air filter lid up slide that new filter in make sure it's sitting down correctly and then you just got to get these two little tabs the back to sit under. You can push that lid back down and put your two little clips on. It's that easy. Perfect. Alrighty guys, so now it's time to change the fuel filter. So I've got my Ryko replacement. So it's an R2619P. So I've done a pretty in-depth video um, on changing the fuel filter on the MUX and DMAX models. 
So if you'd like to see you know, a really in-depth look at changing this, jump over and watch that video. Uh, talk you through uh, exactly how to do it. So right now I'm just going to jump into it, quickly rip it out, change it over and uh, get that new filter in there. So these are quite an easy filter to get out. So they are not hard by any means. Um, very quick. Matter of spinning that top off. Bring the filter forward. Just grab a rag. Pop that lid off. There we go. Just pull that filter out now. There you go guys, so there's the old filter. So I'll just pop that out of there and you can have a bit of a look at it. So you can see all those black marks around there. So that's all the algae and crap that it's filtering out of the system. So this has got about 12,000 Ks on it now. So we'll change that out. I'll drain out the bowl. And I'll also get a bit of brake cleaner in there and get all the sediment out of the bottom. Just clean that out all nice. Get rid of any of the crap that collects in the bottom of the bowl. So I'll pop the ring off here, we'll change that. See the difference in these filters so there's a nice new one versus a 10,000k old one so gotta look after those common rail diesel systems so best way to do that is to change the fuel filter regularly so new filter goes in like so pops in there and we can fit this back to the car i have just given this o-ring a little bit of a lubrication just to help it uh, pop into the top of the housing here out of the way. Now there is a little tab that you need to locate so just get that in the right position. Get these plugs back on now that we tighten that thread up. Get them all back in. Now that filter's popped in. Now it's time to just prime it up so you get a little primer on top. So we'll just prime it up and make sure there's no leaks. So if you're not, just keep priming this until the primer button becomes hard. And that's when you know that fuel filter is full. There we go, that's become pretty hard now. So a quick double check, my plug's on. Ring's nice and tight, and it's popped in. Cool. Now we can clamp down, get rid of all that fuel. Now I'm just going to check all the levels in the engine bay. So, the big thing for me is screen wash. As I do a lot of highway travel, um, I get heaps of bugs on the windscreen. So, did a screen wash in there. Top that up with water. We go through a lot of washer fluid traveling on the highway all the time. So make sure that's full to the boom. The coolant level's ever so slightly down, so I'll just put it needs about 100 mil or so. There we go, that's perfect now. Put that lid back on. Make sure that's sealed. Now a quick squeeze of the brake for the level. That was good. It's all good. Power yeah, steering's all good. We know our oil level's good because we've done that. Washer fluid's full. And our fuel filter's changed, so we are pretty much done in the engine bay now. So let's pop the engine cover back on. Just line up those grommets. Perfect. 
when I think I'm finished in the engine bay, I usually just do a quick check over again, just like underneath. I'll just go through, check all of my caps are tight, to make sure I haven't left anything loose, make sure dipstick's down, you know, everything I've touched and everything that I've checked is uh, all good. So now I've done that, we can uh, have a look at this pollen filter and uh, see how dirty that is. Alrighty guys, so now it's time to get to the pollen filter. So to get to the pollen filter, we've just got to open both these glove boxes. Just pop the glove box to the side like that. And then same with the other side. Pop it over, and the whole glove box will come down. And then you can actually pop it off like that. So it's got little clips here. So it's got these little clips here, which just go onto this bracket here, which enables it to rock. And you just pop it off there. You can get rid of the complete glove box. And now we've just got a couple of Phillips head screws. So we've got one here and three along the top there. And this whole panel will then pop out. Cool, so now we've got those four screws out. Now you just pull down on the glove box like so. You've got a little interior light there, which you've got to pop out. And then uh, the rest just comes out like that very easily. That section aside. Now we've got access to the uh, cabin filter in here. So this is the little cabin filter cover. So you just pry those little plastic clips off each side, like so. I'll just use a little right angle pick just to pop this cabin filter out. And have a bit of a look at it. So it's not too bad. Um, there is a bit of dust inside, so you can see that it is actually a little bit dusty and uh, there's a couple of leaves in there so it's not the worst one I've ever seen um, sometimes these are just caked full of leaves you know if they haven't been changed in a while so I like to breathe fresh air so I'm going to change this filter now so there you can see the difference so this is the old dirty one and this is the new one so nice and clean so I'll just put this new pollen filter in so it does have a little flow arrow on it, so just make sure when you pull the old one out, you put it in the same way. So now we can pop our little cover back on. Just sits there like that. Pops on either side. And then we can put all these trims back on and reassemble it. So these just all pop back in. Just remember our little uh, light here. Don't want to forget him. So it just pushes in and twists. And we just line up all our clips. Just give it a little tap and they should all click in. They're all clicked in. Perfect. Now just my four screws. So those four are tight now. So now I can just pop my glove box back in. So it pretty much just sits on those little there. Give it a little push in. It should clip into place and you just got to maneuver the sides so it clips back in and we're back in action let's check that it works properly all right guys so i'm finished the service now on the mux so i've uh, changed the oil air fuel pollen front rear diff oils just to the handbrake lubed my propeller shafts and done a good check over the whole vehicle and everything is looking really good now. So all I need to do is clean down the engine bay, take it for a good 15 minute drive, bring it back in, have a good check over with the torch, make sure there's no leaks from any of the work I've done today, and then we'll be sweet for another 10,000 Ks. So in my personal opinion, I think you should change the oil and filter every 10,000 Ks um, to really look after your engine. And as well as changing the oil and filter, I recommend changing the fuel filter and air filter and checking the pollen, if not replacing it, um, during the service as well. So that'll keep your engine and all of the filters and things that look after your engine in tip-top condition and hopefully give you an extremely long service life on your vehicle. So on the MUX I'm going to change the oil, air, fuel and pollen every service, so every 10,000 Ks, to really look after it. I'm also going to keep up the logbook servicing, so whatever's required in the logbook servicing I'll change as well. So I hope this was a helpful video guys to show you a little bit of an insight into what goes into servicing your four-wheel drive vehicles and the things you should sort of look over and check. Um, so stay tuned for more four-wheel drive and accessory fitting videos. And uh, yeah, cheers for watching.
So if you found this video helpful and you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more forward driving, accessory fitting and maintenance videos. Cheers guys.